Welcome to Opera 6 feature video tutorial. In this presentation, you will be introduced to the basic principles of the three-dimensional, or shortly 3D, reactor core modeling in Opera 6 advanced process simulation environment. Video tutorial covers several important topics to assist you in learning 3D core modeling in Opera 6. We'll explain you what are Q files and why they are important in Upper 6. We'll also shortly present you with the most important 3D reactor core model features offered in Upper 6. Then we'll guide you through all steps how to build your own 3D reactor core model in Upper 6. Finally, we'll show you how to get most of information out of your 3D core model in Upper 6. Q file is a simple text file that confirms to ASIC standard. It means you can easily edit it in any text editor. Concept of Q files goes back to the early generation of APROS development when they were extensively used in modeling. Q files contain APROS specific commands for any model configuration. That's why Q files can be looked at as an input deck for any model. Q files are essentially handy in storing big model configuration data. Although Apple 6 has extensive graphical user interface to build models, you still can create your model in Apple 6 by reading model configuration data from Q files. Because of 3D reactor core modeling requires lots of input data, Q files is a natural choice to create your own 3D reactor core model. And it's good to know that with your APROS 3D reactor license, the example Q files will be delivered to produce a generic PWR 3D reactor core model, including generic cross-section library. APROS 6 offers extensive variety of 3D reactor core model types. You can choose one by setting up your own model. There are four essential module types in APROS 6 library, that must be defined to create a new 3D reactor core model. These are Nuclear Element 3D is a module that you need to configure fuel elements by specifying fuel element position in the core, reactor channel to hold fuel elements, enrichment, and so on. Then you need Nuclear Control Element, a module that contains configuration of control elements and has a similar input format as per nuclear element 3D. Next in row is the reactor channel. It's a thermal hydraulic module that defines channel geometry, and you could also choose type of thermal hydraulic flow solution model. APROS offers three types of thermal hydraulic solution models, six, five, and three equation flow models. Finally comes Nuclear Reactor 3 module type. It is a master module that must always be created for 3D core model to work. In APRO 6, you could create PWR, BWR, and VVER reactor core types. You could also select lattice geometry and also neutronic solution methods, finite difference, or more sophisticated nodal method. In the example 3D reactor core model, you'll find channel construction Q file. It's a part of 3D reactor core input deck. That will create thermal hydraulic network for you. When this file is executed, APROS will add reactor channels. Channel names in the example begin with chan plus number channel. Then upper and lower points will be added and they will form boundary conditions. In the following step, pipes are added. One set of pipes will connect lower point with each reactor channel inlet, and another set of pipes will connect each reactor channel outlet with upper point. Now you have thermal hydraulic part of your 3D core is ready for the simulation. In the following example, we'll walk you through all these steps. We'll also show you how basic visualization trends can be created in APRO 6 with ease. We start with creating a new model.
it takes a while. Now it's ready. We rename our model. Next step would be to copy all Q files we need. We can open one of them, most important. With the help of this file, we build thermohydraulic network. We just have to run it. When it's ready, we'll have thermohydraulic network built. Now we have to visualize it. We create under configuration non-visual folder, rename it, and after that we attach all models we just created. It's easy done. Once we import it, we can browse every model we imported. They're available here. We add some basic trends we would like to monitor mass flow rates. We select single channel open trend window and select liquid mass flow attribute to monitor. Easily drag and drop. So now we have ready, we could start simulate. It takes a while for preparation. Now we see simulation is running. Flow stabilizes. So we have completed our first step. After the thermohydraulic part of 3D reactor core model has been built, it is time to add some neutronics. Again, the 3D reactor core example has core construction queue file that will create all necessary parts. First, fuel assemblies must be added. In the example, they are named NEL plus assembly number. After that, control elements added. After fuel assemblies and control roads have been added, it comes turn for nuclear reactor 3 module. This module essentially controls neutronics dynamic during simulation. When all bits are in place, one more step left. For our 3D reactor core to function properly, a suitable cross-section library must be imported. After this simulation can be started, let us see how it works in practice. First, we copy all Q files we need. The same way, drag and dropping. We open core construction Q file. So it contains everything what we need. To construct 3D core, we just have to run it. After it's completed, we'll have all modules imported. We just have to attach them. We create new folder in configuration non-visual and attach it. First, we attach fuel elements. And then control roads. Finally comes 3D core master model.
Now we have all modules and we see that we can already visualize 3D core. But we'll discuss it later. We add some basic trending. We would like to monitor power level. So we select it. Before simulation, we have to additionally import cross-section library. Here it comes. So we try to simulate. Preparation takes a while, but then we see that power level is little bit little bit showing spike in the beginning and then stabilizes at some level. It less than one, but this is normal. Reactor we built in the previous part is not tuned to full power. This is quite normal. You just have to adjust power level by using uniform reactivity tuning coefficient, TDK. Few hints worth to mention. When you adjust power level with the tuning coefficient, you must not rush and do it with small increments to coefficient. 10 to minus 3 is usually safe to start with. It is also good to reduce simulation time step, otherwise power spikes could cause instabilities. After your reactor power is at desired level, you could return simulation time step to its default value. All these hints will be shown to you in the following video clip. So, as we see, the reactor level is not exactly the one. That's usually the case when you just build a new 3D reactor core in APROS. For that you need to tune it. So, we first start to reducing simulation time step and trying to speed up it. Tuning process could be interactive. As you can see, we select tuning parameter, start simulation, and changing it, adding little by little. We see immediately result. The process must be repeated several times, and it takes some time. So as I said, you must be careful and not to rush. That's the final result. We stabilized our level at 1. 3D reactor core visualization in APRO 6 happens with the help of visualization editor. Click on this icon to open the editor. In visualization editor, you might have as many visualization views as you want. In this screenshot, we have two. Sometimes it's important to have information in each view related to one particular cross-section. This can be done by selecting Synchronize Axis option. Now you will have in each view information about properties in one single cross-section. To aid you with Visualization Reference Axis option, draws axis in each view to show you exact position of cross-section slices. With view selected, you could have a look at radial cross-section slice. At vertical U cross-section slice. At vertical V cross-section slice. 
or vertical W cross-section slice. For rectangular lattice, you only need R, U and V views. But if you have hexagonal lattice, you will need also W. Upper 6 also allows to export visualization results into SVG, PNG and CSV documents. This is the last part of this video tutorial. In this part, we'll show you how to visualize 3D reactor core model. We begin with the model we created earlier. It has all modules and components we need. Fuel elements, control rods, reactor channels, and 3D reactor master module. We also created simple automation control circuit. It controls control position according to power level and set point. We have measurement unit, we have PI controller, set point. We have also device controllers. Each device controller is attached to control rod. We can now open visualization editor. As you can see, we can monitor many attributes of the reactor core. And objects in visualization editor are colored according to values of attributes being monitored. Every node represents certain location in the reactor core. We have synchronized views. If you click on any of this, you're going to get value. You can also browse core by selecting slice. You can change access view. Now we can change it to W. Return back to radial. Now we have cross-section view from the top. Now we're moving down. We can start simulation. Look at the power level. It a little bit stabilized above one. Now we try to see effect of reducing power level. See how control roads gonna cope with the demand. We see that control roads are moving down. Color is changing. You can click on every element and see what's the value. You can see from trended level of control roads. Simulation continues. Control roads and more and more lowered. And you can see that color is changing. Now power level is changing also. Reactor level going down. Also we can see from the visualization editor that color is changing. Continues. As you can see, we can see the value of control road by clicking on their picture of reactor core. We have concluded this video tutorial and we hope you have enjoyed it. If you have any more questions or want to get more information, please visit us at www.apros.fi. Thank you.